Hi, this is David at Seismic Rocks. Today I'd like to talk about SegWi import and export using Seismic Unix. The first video, this is part one, and this video is about simple export and import. That is, uh, there will be simple files that will not give us any problems. Part two is about a difficult SegWi file and how to import that. Let me bring up my browser and we'll see that on uh, the Seismic Unix wiki site there is some documentation and we have SU data format. This is a very nice table that has the uh, first column is the SU key, then the length of that SU key in bytes, and then the byte locations of that key, then a description. And uh, we see information down here to byte 180, 181 to 240 in SegWi Rev 0 is unassigned. But then Seismic Unix is apparently using some of this because there are keys. So Seismic Unix internally does use some of this beyond 181, uh, beyond 180. And we'll look at that in a little bit. And then for Rev1 and Rev2, uh, these are locations that are not used by Seismic Unix as we know it internally because Seismic Unix was created before Rev1 and Rev2 were, were uh, created. I'll go over that again in a moment. Now the Seismic Rocks website, which is my own website, we can jump here to my own documentation. And on this page, there's a SegWi overview, and then there's a binary, I'm sorry, the uh, 3200 by textual header with an example textual header. And the binary header, 400 by binary header documentation, is similar to the trace header documentation we looked at earlier. Uh, and then uh, they, we have again the 240 byte trace header documentation and uh, this covers uh, Rev0, Rev1 and uh, let me go over what that means. So on the overview page here we have references or links to the SegWi documentation. The SegWi Rev2 was created in 2017 and SegWi Rev1 before that, that is the first revision of SegWi was created in 2002. The original SegWi standard was created in 1975 and that's why this is called Rev0 uh, because Rev1 came later, that is the first revision in 2002 and then the second revision came in 2017. Again these are links for you to download uh, these individual documentation pieces. Now let me go ahead and try to squeeze these uh, images here into one screen. This is the SegWi Rev0, this is Rev1, and this is Rev2. This is my own diagram. This is taken from the standards documentation of Rev1, and this is from, etc., Rev2 documentation. You see that in Rev0, it's simply this. That is, there's a 3200 byte textual header, which is readable. Then there's a 400 byte binary header, which is not human readable. And then beyond that, there are 240 byte trace header and trace data pairs. This is standard for any number of traces. And then this is the last 240 byte trace header and trace data pair, the last one. So that's simply what Rev0 contains. A textual header, a binary header, and then a series of trace header and trace data pairs going out to the end of the tr uh, uh, seismic recorded signal, or the, the SegWi file, I'm sorry. Here in Rev1, this is the same as this and this. This is what we have here, but you see there's an optional in Rev1 and in Rev2, there's an optional 128 byte SegWi tape label. Then we have a textual file header and a 400 byte binary header, 3200 and 400 as we already know. Now the Rev1 added this 3200 byte extended textual header and that is the first and the many and then the nth and so 
the Rev1 allows any number of 3200 byte extended textual human readable blocks behind after the binary header, 400 byte binary header, and before the first seismic trace. Here we have the same as before, first seismic trace traces, last seismic trace. Now Rev2 has a couple of changes from Rev1. That is, it has a data trailer, one or more 3200 byte records uh, optional. And uh, so not only do we have from, B from Rev1, we have the 3200 byte extended text letter, but then you can put one or more at the end, that is after the last seismic trace. Now Rev2 has a much more complex situation here that it might escape your eye, one or more 240 byte trace one headers, one or more 240 byte trace last headers. That is, in Rev2, each trace can have more than one trace header, 240 byte trace header. Now, Seismic Unix does not understand this. So if you have a Rev2 or Revision 2 uh, 2017 or beyond seismic SegWi file that is in Rev2 format. Now it's possible today to make a Rev0 format trace or a file. It's possible today to make a Rev1. That is, it doesn't have this and it doesn't have more than one. But if you have one that is fully Rev2 compliant with, then, then it will not be able to be read by Seismic Unix. And here are some notes then about the binary header. Most people don't think about the binary header when they're importing seismic data, uh, seismic segwi files, and that's because there is no geophysical information in the binary header, the 400 byte binary header. Uh, but it has critical information for completing the import, and that's why the documentation here on my webpage contains this merely for reference. It's important but rarely thought about. Alrighty then, let's move on uh, to uh, actually doing an import. So over here in my work subdirectory, uh, I use LL a lot. It's an alias. It's an alias for uh, an LS variant. So it's a, a long version that is uh, not the uh, compact version you're used to seeing. Uh, I use LL a lot. I use, also use LLRT a lot. And this is, it, what it does is it uh, flips the order so that the, in time, so that the most recent file created is at the bottom. When I have a very long list of files, when I have many files in my subdirectory, then I might be interested in getting to the last one created or the most recent created or most recent two or three created. And so for that purpose, to see this, I have uh, LLRT, merely a variation on LS. Okay, so um, I have a, uh, have a SegWi file here, uh, EI, which stands for Eugene Island. That is, it's a marine survey SegWi file. So let me go ahead and import that, or I'm sorry, uh, so convert that from SegWi. So SegWi read, tape stands for the name of the SegWi file, not the SU file. So EI.SGY. And uh, let's make a simple output. I'm sorry, let's pipe that through SegWi clean. Whenever I can remember to do it, I really, really want to pipe this uh, imported data. The, the, now at this point, at the moment of the pipe, it's actually an SU file. And I pipe that SU file, that is its seismic Unix format. So I pipe that through SegWi clean, and then I give it an output name, so ei.su. So let's see what I have now. I have, uh, I have my original SegWi file, I have a binary uh, block, and I have a header block 
400 byte binary file, 3200 byte header file, and the seismic Unix data. That is seismic Unix formatted. These were the seismic traces. If I if I do a little bit of arithmetic here, so I have. Uh, let me add these together. So let's go 400 plus 30, 3200 plus, and my seismic Unix is 2409600, 2409600, and the answer is 2413200, and that would be here, 2413200. So in the case of a simple rev0 file, I have a single binary file, binary 400 binary block, a 3200 textual header block, and the seismic units data, and these are broken off from the original segy. Uh, this, I just use the, uh, it's called the BC calculator, which stands for basic calculator. Now, we can look at the textual header, and it looks messy, uh, but it's not. The textual header is a free flow format. It is 40, 40 rows and 80 columns. 80 columns. So let me this right now. You can see that my window. Look over here. You can see that my window was terminal. Is it was it 90 or around 90? Now I, if I bring it into 80 characters wide, then you can see how everything lines up very well because that's how this file was created by the book. Uh, uh, 40 characters. Let me repeat that command now that we have the window set more clearly for the way it's supposed to be seen. So it's chock full of information uh, about where it came from. Eugene Island phase one. Uh, down here we have uh, was resampled to four milliseconds. So a variety of information here in this 3200 byte block, uh, 3200 byte uh, textual header. Now, if I cat the binary file, I got garbage because it's binary. It's not a human readable format. There's no Seismic Unix program to read the binary header. Just want to throw that out there. Let's flip over to this terminal and look at the documentation for segway read. And I could have typed simply segway read. Instead, I typed seg su doc segway read because I like to get as much information as I can from the documentation. Sometimes the su doc command adds a, a bit of the information, a bit more of the information that is in the program documentation. Now we see that the default of importing the the textual 3200 by textual header is to call it header but i can have this parameter here to give it another name during import and the same for the binary block the default is to export it that is uh, i'm sorry to import from the segway to SU and then and then drop out this file it calls binary these are default names but i can change these names on import simply by using the B file parameter, H file parameter. And I want to point out to you that there's this X file, X headers, um, file is sort of the extended text block. So it appears from this that Seismic Unix does understand having the 3200 byte extended textual header and it will block it off during segway read import and 
uh, call her the default, it'll give her the default name X headers. So this shows the importance of looking at the at the output from the import process uh, to see if there's an X headers file, not just the binary and the header. Okay, so let's move on to the next concept. Next concept is that the next time I do a uh, an import, the binary, because it's a generic name and header, generic name from the segwire read, it'll be overwritten. So if I'm importing a series of files, of, size, of, of segwire files, they will overwrite every time this binary and header. So I'm going to head and move header to EI dot txt, it's the textual header file, and I will move binary to ei.bin for binary. And now if I do uh, an import of another segwire file, I won't overwrite these the binary and textual header files. The reason for preserving them under a, a unique name is because the export process, that is program segwi write, requires a, uh, these two files. Let's go ahead and look at that. If we go to the end of the segwire write documentation, here, segway, the program segwire headers can be used to make the ASCII and binary files required by this code, meaning required by this program. Let's go back to our data. And uh, let's see what we have. Let's plot the data. Let's plot it a better way. The way I like to do it, using the perk value of 99 or 98. Uh, the default is uh, 100, but I like to uh, give it a little something. Uh, and so what we see is apparently a stacked uh, line uh, may or may not be migrated. But we have the data, and that's the important thing to be proving at this point. SU range, let's take a look at the headers. That's what SU range is all about. EI dot SU. And we see that uh, that there are track L, track F. If we go back here to the documentation, looking at the documentation for the 240 byte trace header. We see that the last trace, I'm sorry, the last header key is DT. And DT is here, bytes 117, 118. This is well before the uh, the very important 180 boundary of SU's understanding of key information. If the uh, if there had been information above the 180 boundary, let's say, then it might interfere with things that are going on. And for this to explain this a bit better. I probably am not doing very well right now. Let me bring up the documentation for SUX WIGB. And what I wanted to show you here is that SUX WIGB, a plotting program, and a variety of the plotting programs do this. They use D1, D2, F1, F2. Well, D1, D2, F1, F2 are used, are here. 
above the 180 boundary. So what does that mean altogether? Let's go over here and look at some code. Uh, so this is where the uh, source code is located. And let's go ahead and look at segwayclean.c. And here is why segwayclean is used. It's used because TR is the trace buffer, as we say in programming, the trace array. And F1, D1, F2, D2, these are being set to zero. Uh, so these keys are here, D1, F1, UngPow, NTR, Mark. So using Segway Clean sets uh, bytes 181 to 210 to zero. It blanks them essentially. Setting them to zero makes them empty. And in this way, we don't get interference from uh, the plot program that does use those positions. Now, it turns out that, uh, that this ei.su or ei.segui uh, file doesn't appear to have any internal conflict with those bytes in the first place. So segui clean did not have to be used. But um, unless you do this check and double check, then uh, it's always recommended to use Segway Clean during import. So now that I have the data, let's go ahead and convert it back to a Segway file. And that would be Segway write tape equals, that's a segwi file, so I already have a dot segwi, so I'm going to put dot two dot sgy for the output file. And uh, I have to supply the name, remember, of the textual header, which is the h file parameter, ei dot txt, txt, and the binary file, which I've saved under ei dot bin, and then the file ei.su is my Sesame Unix file. And we see here the binary count, the, the byte count, is the same for these two files. Now, let me demonstrate this export another way. I'm going to use a program su plain. And you might remember that su plain makes these geologically impossible crossing planes. Uh, a simple file, uh, a simple program which creates fake data for later testing of some sort. So let's go ahead and run issue plane again, and uh, this time I'm going to save the data. Call it plane.su. And now I want to export this file to segwi, but remember I don't have a binary file or a uh, textual file. So there is a program called segwi headers that makes these files. So the import, uh, sorry, the input is seismic, the uh, seismic Unix file. And then what I want out is a uh, H is for the header, the 3200 byte textual header, plain.txt. And the B file is going to, I'm going to call that plain.bin. And so we have these three files. So I can export this. 
the output segwire file is going to be plain.sgy h file equal plain.txt b file equal plain.bin and the input to this is plain.su but before I run this in another terminal here I want to be sure that I'm only 80 characters wide. So I'm going to edit this file, the, the textual header block, plain.txt. Moving around this file, the tape was made at the Center for Wave Phenomena, which is not true. It's made in my very own basement laboratory at Golden, Colorado. So let me change this from Golden, Colorado, 80401 to, I'll say, the location is Venus and Jupiter. And I was very careful when I made up the name here to substitute to have the exact same number of characters that I just deleted. So I'm going to write this file, quit vim. And now the really important part is that although I edited it, I made sure that it still had exactly 3,200 bytes. Always be sure that if you edit, and I encourage you to edit the textual header file to have as much information as you can put in for whomever you send the file to, but make sure that it's 3,200 bytes when you're done editing. Also, that it, you did not use the enter feed the carriage return character just characters that you fit in spaces not a carriage return anywhere alrighty so I have this let's go back here and now we'll run this write program and Let's go ahead and re-import plain.sgy. Uh, so segy read tape equal plain.sgy and I will name plain.2.sg, I'm sorry, txt, b file equal plain.2.bin. Good habit, pipe this through segway clean. And the export, now the import, rather the su file, plain.2. SU and let's make sure SUX wig B plain dot two dot SU per ninety nine and here we have the data just fine so that import is just fine and uh, let's go ahead and cat the plain.2.txt. And so that is the file that I edited. Okay, well that's all I wanted to show you. And that's the simple import and simple export. In part two, I go over looking at a very complicated uh, Segway file that it has uh, uh, problems with the uh, location of information in various bytes. That is, it has information in bytes beyond uh, uh, byte number 180. Thanks for your time. Uh, give this a like if you like, and uh, subscribe if you subscribe. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.